Chris the Bergeron zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So I wanted to talk about some of the programs that we offer today because I think a lot of the programs go unnoticed. The first program is the Isle Return. And I just want to, I have the brochures up here. So I had mentioned Captain Shannon. Captain Shannon from the fire department was a key part to this program. And this program, the Isle Return, according to the brochure, has several components to it. The Isle Return, and all of these programs that we offer are free. So the Isle Return is a program that we've offered for, for oh, years oh, and oh, years. Oh, by the way, or thinking about it a different way, they're your tax dollars at work. Let's put it that way. They're not, they're not free, but actually you're paying for them through your... No, I think that's important to know. That's important to know, right? I like how I explained it better. <laughs> right. All right. All right. They're free. They're not coming directly out of your pocket. Um, if that's the case, then I'm very costly. Well, <laughs> <all right. laughs> um, so the Isle Return Program, it's for wanderers. But what we've realized is it's not only for wanderers on the island. It's important to know that we have several other diseases, if I, if I can use that word. So for instance, any time we have even a child now, and we've brought this into the school, who may have ADHD or who may um, have any type of health issues, that the child might bolt out of the house or the elder might be lost and wandering, the Isle Return Program is an application that you fill out and you put your, your specific information down. So we have a picture of who you are and what you look like. We have what medications you're on, what it is we may be um, dealing with as far as health concerns. And it's also um, a way to know where you may be wandering to. What are the areas that you're comfortable in, where you're from, etc. Why do we do this? Why is it important to have this information as a first responder? There have been several times before this program was implemented that we would respond as first responders to a call. We would find you confused, disoriented, lost, and we wouldn't know who you are, where you belong, and we wouldn't be able to return you. So what would we do? We would bring you to the hospital, where they would then go through their policy of all of the testings, find out who you are, and it's traumatic. Not only the fact that you've been found by a first responder, that's traumatic enough, but now we're, we're bringing you to the hospital because that's our policy, unless we know who you are. So this program, and that specific information, and that personal information, is only kept at the police station, the sheriff's office who um, is actually in charge of the application process, the fire department, and the state police. You s I say that out loud and it sounds like an, it's an awful lot, but it's not because those are the first responders who are actually going to the initial call of the person wandering. And that information is all confidential to confidential, the Confidential, right? it's not repeated anywhere, and you actually have to sign a waiver, and we've all signed confidentiality forms working for the town. But I can't tell you how reassuring it is for a family member who may be the caretaker of that person who may have turned their backs for five minutes, ten seconds, and whether you're an adult or a child, the person has fled the house. You're in panic mode. Well, you call up the phone, you call the dispatch. We now have the information on you, and we can go search. And as soon as we find you, we'll know who you are. On a side note, because this is just a paper program, if you will, We've also implemented something called the safety net. And the safety net is the 21st century program for this. Um, this program, I had said that there's no cost to it. The safety net is the same kind of program. You put down the same information, but you wear a bracelet. And the bracelet is more of a GPS. And the state police have the equipment now that if, if you call and you're on this program and you call us because you've you're lost or someone else has called us because they've lost you, um, we are then able to respond and um, what we can do now with the safety net program is the state police carry the other portion of it, we turn it on and your bracelet will read, how many miles does it work, do you know? It's, just a couple miles. it's a couple mile radius so that we could go on the point that you were lost, hold up the, the wand and actually find you, they estimate that we'll find you within 10 minutes time. Wow. At this from beginning of the activation. That's amazing. That is so helpful. And I bring this up because we haven't quite, we've introduced it to the community, but nobody is on it at this time. And I mentioned that there is a cost to it. Do you mind if I bring this up? But the sheriff and the sheriff's department have offered to pay the monthly services and the sign-up fee. 
So there's absolutely no reason um, that we shouldn't have anyone on it. Now the best part about the safety net program is it goes anywhere in the country. So that my, the, the Isle Return program is only good for Nantucket. The three ring binder is only held in the uh, emergency departments. Whereas if you have the safety net program, it's a national program that if you were to go to Boston and get lost and you had the bracelet, there are departments within the country that also have that magic wand. A lot of the departments, and I don't know the number, but I know that it's significant. Mm -hmm. And we would be able to find you wherever you are. So it's a great program, and I recommend that you look into it. And um, for, for people traveling here in the summertime <coughs> with their children who might be, sorry, who might be, uh, you mentioned ADHD, but it's, uh, it's actually autism. Because it will allow, I just don't want people worried about their grandchildren who have ADHD. That's just a hyperactivity disorder. It's easily managed. Autism presents much bigger challenges, like this bolting, which is particularly prevalent as children reach their teens. Um, that the um, safety net also is really helpful for people who may live in other states or communities who come here in the summertime, who doesn't want to give their child a vacation, um, particularly in, a, in an unfamiliar surrounding. I mean, it really takes a, a burden from parents who are involved with that program. It's really yeah. valuable. We had a gentleman over the winter time, or excuse me, last summer, get lost and he wandered into the conservation land. We all know how many miles of conservation mm -hmm. land we have. And it was, he wasn't on this program, and it was hours before we were able to locate him. Now, whether or not it would have helped if he had the Isle of Return program due to the fact that it was conservation land, and clearly it would have been a suspicious person anyway that we would have known. But if he had the safety net program, we would have been able to find him because of that radius that it reads within minutes. So it's, it's helpful. Um, <coughs> the second program that you'll find on this brochure, and you can find all of these programs under the IsleReturn.com, NantucketIsleReturn.com, you can Google it, and these will all come up. And the applications are all online. But, so they're, they're three separate, but they're similar. So the next one is the 911 Disability Indicator. <laughs> The 911 Disability Indicator is a state program. And what does that do? Again, it's an application. It doesn't cost anything. And what that allows you to do is it, you fill out the application and you submit it to the police department. Everyone knows now that it's a central dispatch. And so whether you call the fire department or police department, it will ring into the police department. So it's important that central dispatch now has all of the pertinent information that we require. So the 911 Disability Indicator, it's a form you fill out. And once you fill it out, we submit it to the 911 company. The 911 state police then enters it into their database so that when you use a landline and you call 911, your name automatically pops up on the screen anyway. But now we'll get a little red flag. And it gives us specific information again of the medical condition you may be in, of the um, prescriptions you may be on, or any other pertinent information a first responder may need to know. Wow, it, it would even have like medical conditions. So, so whatever they would so put on that So if the ambulance or whatever is showing up, yep. it's already knowing right. or has an idea what the issues are going to be. Yep. That's terrific. The That's key is the key is for us to have as much information while responding. Now, you brought up autism. A lot of times, um, I, w I used to be the school resource officer. A lot of times, we would respond to a house where there would be an autistic child, and of course, each child in that. Is, is, is spectrum is a little bit different. They require a little bit different care, if you will. And so how important is it, if that is your child, or to be that child, to make sure that the people who are responding to your house, because of whatever, understands the needs of that particular family. It helps out tremendously, not only for the family, but it helps out for the police and the fire who are responding. So the 911 Disability Indicator is an, uh, a way to do that. The third program, is the safety net, which <coughs> is what we went on, uh, the GPS one. So, mm -hmm. yep. The um, safety net, that's the one that has the bracelet? Yeah. 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 So I guess when I see the footnote on traveling with my mother and child and I'm in the airport, you turn around for a split second and it's on GPS. Mm -hmm. And stupidly, it's giving me like boarding pass. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that safety net is a is a program nationally, exactly. and it requires <coughs> it requires each department to pick it up, and there is a cost with it, 
Um, but like I say, our sheriff has graciously said um, that he would sponsor anyone who um, would like to take it. Now, granted, it you know, if we all of a sudden have a huge influx and it's above his budget, then we'll have to come up with a new method. But at this point in time, um, there <laughs> exactly there is money for that program. So there's no reason that if you do need that program, um, you're not on it. So.